joining us again on this <laughs> Monday night, October 7th, 7th. yeah, mm-hmm. I should, mm. mm-hmm. October the 7th, 2019, today has been a great day, yes it has, this is the day that the Lord has made, we shall rejoice and be glad in it, God is faithful, he's true, he's just, he's mighty, he mm-hmm. is everything that we need. And October is the month for domestic violence. Hallelujah. Minister Rhonda ministered on um, Saturday um, on a panel for domestic violence. And so it was an awesome circle of women talking about different things about domestic violence and different things that they have experienced, how they got out. It was just awesome, 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 awesome. You will see more of that. Um, That was just the beginning. Yes. Um, with that circle, and it's also the month of breast cancer awareness, and leukemia and lymphoma. Um, my sister is a survivor of. I have a sister that's a survivor of breast cancer, and a sister that's a survivor of lymphoma. So God is faithful. Yes, He is. But tonight we're going to focus on the domestic violence part of October. And, min- and the Lord has given Minister Rhonda a topic about when to break the silence. Yes. Timing is everything. It sure is. Timing is everything. There's so many people out there that have experienced different type of violence. Um, a lot of times when you hear people talk about domestic violence, they just automatically just put it off. It's just the physical part of it. But right. it's so many different levels of violence um from verbal from uh it could be financial abuse it could be abuse within the church itself it could be family abuse or children abuse it's all different types of violence and it's just a matter of bringing awareness so people will know more about it and pay attention to the people that you love and within your circle or your family because a lot of people that you be around every day talk to all the time they are going through it because of certain areas that they cover up it's certain things that they do they have that mask on right and nobody knows or they think nobody knows so it's just a matter of bringing awareness is that you as the individual can start paying attention to those key elements because god will give you an unction he'll place it right. in your spirit that something is not no, right. right and right. once you get that intuition that that spirit telling you something ain't right with this particular situation then you need to start paying attention and try to you know wait on the spirit to guide you in which way to go and how to handle this situation or help that person out right um 
oftentimes the release of any situation is critical. Mm-hmm. One, because when you're releasing a things such as domestic violence or any type of violence that you're experiencing you want it to land in a place where it it could be helped yes it could be helped um you know it's critical because if the victim is not ready Mm -hmm. and just say for instance if i'm a supporter and the Holy Spirit tells me, okay, Keisha, something's going wrong, blah, blah, blah. Just like the timing is everything about releasing, mm-hmm. the timing is everything about approaching. Right. So tonight we're going to talk about timing and how you have to be very careful about how, uh, when the person released it to you, mm-hmm. how to even respond to that. And, um, you know, oftentimes people that have not experienced any type of violence uh, their response is, "Ooh, if that was me, if that was me, or came, be, that wouldn't have been me. Mm-hmm. We don't know what it would have been if it was you, exactly. if you have not been in that um situation. So timing is everything, and to the victims, we want to, cause we want we want to cater to the victims. We want to cater to the ones that are being abused, um, the ones that are trying to make it out. Um, there are hotlines that you can call." Um, the number one hotline is Jesus. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Jesus on the main line. Call mm-hmm. him up and tell him what you want. Um, mm-hmm. we cannot hide anything from God, but we have to use wisdom. When you've made up your mind yes. that you're ready to get out. And one particular friend of mine, um, that have experienced domestic violence that I've walked through. For a, a very long time, walk through with, and even as a supporter, we have to be. Cr- it's critical for us as well, um, and that's what I was explaining in a circle on Saturday. When you walk with these people, we have to be willing to lay down our life for a friend. That's right. And when the Holy Spirit unctions you, just like Minister Rhonda said, you have to be on point. You cannot because that's the lifeline. When thank you, Holy Ghost, when the Holy Spirit unction you when people are going through and especially domestic violence or any type of thing that would take their life away, mm-hmm. that's a lifeline. And if you don't respond in a timely manner, yes, it could be their life. And you don't ever want the blood on your hands saying, Darn, if I would have just picked up the phone and called. Mm-hmm. Oh, if I would have just went by there like the Holy Spirit told me to do. So even with that, the timing is critical. And so um, for the victims out there, for the people who have um, made it out and still haven't told anybody, timing is still everything. Your life depends upon the time. You know, I mean, it's just when it's time, it's time. And don't be ashamed. Mm -hmm. Do not allow the enemy to make you shame. Do not allow the enemy to make you feel guilty. about Because that's how the enemy holds you hostage in that situation. So, um, Minister Rhonda, go ahead about the timing. You release it. Well, it's, it's also, too, like you were saying, as far as the devil trying to, you know, take away your mind and all of that stuff. Because you go through those moments, or at least I went through those moments. And I know it's other people that I've spoken to as well. Where you like, oh, I wonder what my family going to say. I wonder right. what my friends going to say if they really know what's going on. And then, you, I mean, you start having those negative thoughts. So you holding on a little bit long because you don't want nobody to say nothing. Out right. Of the way. You don't want nobody right. looking at you funny or trying to down you. like Or you, judge you yeah. because, you, because you're in that in that situation so this is where we have to talk to talk about the spirit of guilt and shame you know we have to remember that anything that the enemy would throw up in our face or make us feel guilty or shame about that's another a form of isolation Mm -hmm. so the enemy will say nah you don't need to tell them because you know they're gonna judge you right or you know it's your fault it's it's never your fault to be abused um it's never your fault to be beat and just just done like you know even animals don't deserve that right so we want to encourage the people and the women and men that's being abused because it's a man that's abused as well right you know this is just domestic violence is not only geared towards women there's some men and you have what they call 
Somebody must have got tinnitus Monday. Monday. <laughs> <laughs> they have what they call family domestic violence. Mm-hmm. And so that's that means that person is beating you, the children, and everybody in the house, you know? Right. So there and you know, children tell <laughs> the whole truth. Yeah. <laughs> and so even with that, if you're a person that that child has confined it in, timing is is of essence. And so tonight we we just want you to know that when the Lord leads you or unction you to release um the truth about your situation or when the Lord unctions you to go and help somebody, you got listen, you got to have the spirit of urgency. Mhm. And then it's also a matter of making sure that you have that strategy to get out of the situation. Right. Because in some situations, you just can't up and walk out no, the door. No, because that's your okay. life. Right. You no, know, you have to really, really have a plan right. of action. Like, right. I don't relocate it from where I was staying at to a different area to avoid a certain situation. Right. And most people end up having to relocate. Some people even do it in another state. Some people just have right. to move out the country. They do whatever they have to do you know, to protect themselves or keep their, their selves alive. Right, and you have to seek help. Yes. Get you some help. Every opportunity when that you get that you think is a safe way, get yourself some help. Yes. Men and women. Don't think it's just women, cause there's some men out here getting beat up now. They, right. you know, they getting dogged out. They getting them knees and them bows. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, it either way, it's 100 percent wrong. Um, and just like we had talked about, as, as far as your your significant other, don't need to know everybody you know, cause they might be that one person that's gonna save you and help you. Right. Right. For the ones that are in this type of situation. Mm-hmm. If you're a victim, use wisdom. Yes. Domestic violence is very, it is, it's, it's out here. It's in, listen, it's in church. Mm-hmm. It's in schools. It's in every organization you can think of. Somebody is being beaten against their will. Or verbally abused. Right. Um, and them scars can be a worse than the physical one. Right. Because one thing, you, you might can, that wound on your arm may heal. You might have a scar. But it's nothing like hearing in your head somebody calling you out your name. Yep. Or telling you what you're not. Or telling you what they're going to do to you and threatening you and this is that and other. It's real. I saw, and I'm going to promote this movie called Faceless Shadows by Shawnee D. Um, She's in an entrepreneur group with me. And when I tell y'all this movie is about domestic violence, um, you can get it. You can go to her page, Shawnee D, S-H-O-N-N-E-Y-D-E-E, Faceless Shadows. It's an awesome movie. Um, It's produced, written by her. She was a uh, sister to the victim. Mm. And she wrote it from a man's perspective. Wow. And when I tell you it is awesome, it's called Faceless Shadows. And it covers the, the it just covers so much. It's an awesome, independent, produced movie. I mean, it, it, it is amazing. But it, she wrote it from the man's perspective. As, as like from the abuser? Yes. So his mindset. Right. Okay, yeah, that is, that will be interesting. Yes. Yes. It is awesome. And it was one part of that movie, and I have to tell you, it is one part of that movie that really touched my soul, my spirit. It's when the abuser was set free from that little boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Because so many men, okay, we shifting, but is is it okay that we shift? Yeah, because that's a part of it. So many abusers are trapped by the little boy Mm -hmm. who they were never able to become. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So many abusers 
male abusers to our women is trapped by the little boy that they could never become. That's deep. So many male abusers, hear me and hear me clearly, is trapped by the little boy that they could not, they couldn't, they can be. And so they develop this, this spirit, you know, and they don't know how to interact or know how to um, express. Mm -hmm. And then especially when that little boy was abused. Right. Neglected. Wasn't loved. Cursed. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, y'all, go get Faceless Shadows. This is an awesome, awesome movie. And especially for our culture. Yes. It is amazing. But let me tell you, there's uh, mm -hmm. domestic violence is in all cultures. Mm -hmm. It's just not us African Americans, black Indians, light skinned this, light. It's in Hispanics, Mexicans, Caucasians, Vietnamese, Japanese. It's 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 all over, okay. But mm -hmm. Faceless Shadow is an awesome, awesome movie. And the my most favorite part of that movie is when that grown man was finally mm -hmm. released that released that little boy. Yeah. And it just it moved me because I know some men that are still trapped by that little boy yeah. and they don't know how to express it or they don't know how to get help to develop that little boy or to leave that little boy behind and become the full grown man they're supposed to be yes and can't always you know look for a dependency in order to do it Whether right you, you the have victim the abuser or the right abusee, right looking for something else to cope is not going to yes. take it away. You have to deal with that. And that was one thing that I taught last Saturday in from Trauma to Triumph. We have to go face to face mm -hmm. with our trauma. Yes. You have to look at trauma no matter whether it's sexual abuse, no matter if it's child abuse, what no matter if it is domestic violence, marital abuse, whatever your trauma was or is, we have to go face to face with that trauma. And we have to look at it, identify it, and then we have to get it some help. So even for the women and men that are being abused in these situations, we have to you have to admit, you know what, I'm being abused. Look at yourself and say, you know what? Mm -hmm. I got a black eye for real. My lip is busted. I need stitches. Yep. Because you can't keep putting makeup on it in order to deal with it. And I know that it's hard. Not from the domestic violence point of view, but just from trauma altogether. Because it's all trauma, mm -hmm. one way or the other. When you're traumatized by something, no matter how you got the trauma, how you experienced it, you still have to be able to look at that trauma and say, I, I experienced this. And so with that, Minister Rhonda, what else? It's also, too, about loving yourself. Because I realized that it took me a while. Like, we were always taught growing up that, you know, you love yourself. You're supposed to tell you, I love you, and this and third. And yeah, I might have said it, but nobody never really taught me how I was supposed to love myself. Right. Just saying it and teaching me and showing me a completely different way. Right. So technically, I didn't. I only was doing the traditional thing as far as saying it. But I didn't really love myself because if I did, I wouldn't have allowed myself to go through the abuse. But when you see things growing up and, you know, as a child, then right. you're thinking that's the only way. Like. Everybody well, you, in, in and, my and family. And you also, and I'm, I'm, Minister Ron, I tell you, God is really using you. Because even in a conversation today, I was having with somebody about showing love and how to do it. And they said, well, it's a learned behavior. I didn't learn how to do that. Right. And so, but now for me, now I'm just talking about me. Now, the first thing that comes to my mind is like, sure, you can't use your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just saying <laughs> because I was taught how to embrace how to love how to say I love you and kill some and you know I was taught how that was done to me yeah so I know how to give it out however when you engage with somebody that don't quite know that or understand that then you cannot expect that 
Right. Y'all, this thing about expectation is just driving me crazy, okay? Crazy in a good way, crazy in a bad way. Because one thing about expectation, when you expect something that somebody don't have, you're setting them up for failure. That's right. So I cannot expect someone to give me something that they've never learned how to do. That's right. That's deliverance all by itself. Because now that means I'm disappointing myself. So I have to go back and regroup and say, okay, Keisha, you cannot expect certain mm-hmm. things from certain people if they don't understand what that is. Mm-hmm. Now, my other side of my brain saying, if you know that I'm expecting this from you, then can't you go find out how to do it? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Because if it's something That's that you're just. the carnal side. Huh? <laughs> That's the carnal side. No, 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 no. Because, because what if they go to the wrong people trying to figure it out? Well, yeah, I guess so. But I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back on domestic violence. That is a part of it. Okay. So still with loving, you gotta love yourself. yourself. Okay. And it made it easier once I started looking in the mirror and just really face watching myself. Face. Yeah, right. watching myself. I'm like, okay, I really didn't. Right. I didn't love myself. So then I started on that path of you know that self love and all of that stuff. And then that's what made it easier for me to walk away. But right. first I had right. to admit to it. You know, right. I had to figure it out, even though, you know, being affectionate or whatever, I was only affectionate sometimes. I didn't hear I love you until I got out of high school. So right. I never heard it growing up. It right. wasn't a hugging thing in the house. Right. No daily hugs from parents or anything like right. that. So I didn't even know that was normal. That right. that was something that was supposed to happen. Right. Right. And I understand. And I'll say the same thing to somebody about affection. I was like. You know, where's the affection? <laughs> Look at me be like, what? But here's the thing. If you don't know, you don't know. But we know you're going to let it be known. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, and I could be wrong, you know. And if I'm wrong, forgive me. Charge it to nothing. <laughs> don't even charge it to my mind, okay? Just charge it to the game. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, but everybody ain't the same, so you cannot expect everything from right. everybody. Right. So, just like you know, as people, you can't expect for somebody to respond or do handle things the way that you would. Like even with the what you was mentioning earlier, how if somebody come be like, oh, I wouldn't do deal with that, or they wouldn't put their hands on me, right, or they right. wouldn't talk to me like that. Right. It's the same thing because right. you never know what you'll do. Right. In that you don't situation. know. No, you don't. You don't know. So be you mindful don't of that. Know. Be mindful. Because you might crawl up in a wall and just be like, oh, my God, it happened to me. What am I supposed to do? Mm. Or you could just bust down the wall and fight back. You never know. You just don't know until you get in that situation. But one thing I do know, you know, as a strong woman and from <laughs> so many aspects, could be the abuser. Mm-hmm. I learned a lot on Saturday because a human being is a human being when they're being abused. Right. You know, and oftentimes we try to make it look different when it's a man and when it's a woman. Mm-hmm. But God doesn't see it that way. He sees it still as just an abuser. Right, as an abuser. So Women, if you are abusing your man, your boo, your 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 whatever, keep your hands to yourself. Keep your hands to yourself. And it's easy to become an abuser. And I'm going to tell you how I know. Let me tell you how I know. Let me just give you my truth. My father was a chronic alcoholic, right? And my mother was a strong woman. My father never, ever put his hands on her. But the things that came out of his mouth mm-hmm. made my mother the abuser. So from the age of, I can't even remember the beginning, up until the age of eight, we had I had to leave home every Thursday night because that's when the drinking began. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I saw my mom literally 
it's going down. But he couldn't leave because he was too drunk. So they would make us leave. But at the end of the day, I had developed some of those characteristics. Mm-hmm. And I'll never forget one time I, w- I was dating a police officer. And it was like, <laughs> and he was like, I'm not going to lose my job. And I'm like, what? He's like, why do you have to? Why the every time you have to approach me, you got to, <laughs> you know, you, you got to keep your hands to yourself. And I was like, but that <laughs> He's like, Keisha, I'm telling you, what you are becoming is not good. So I had to withdraw and say, okay, you know, is this really? And so as life went on, you know, you had to face the mirror. I had to look in the mirror <laughs> and say, because, and I, and I said, Lord, I thank you that I wasn't a boy, because if I was, I probably would have really been an abuser. Mm-hmm. But trust and believe, seeing my mother do that, I knew how to hold my own. You know, so don't come for me. Even if you was trying to be, a, you know, don't come for me, because I'm always ready. And so being in relationships, I've never been beaten, but just to the heightened, you know, how heated a, a conversation or, or, or argument can get. It could have went there. It, I could have been the abuser. Mm-hmm. So oftentimes, this is where we have to pray for our children with generational curses. Exactly. Because we don't want our children, and this is why I can't, like, you know, a certain type of argument makes me very, very nervous because I know what I'm capable of, mm-hmm. if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So I try not to get and be involved in anything that's going to make me go to that extreme be- because of what I've experienced as a child. So as our children, if you are a, an abuser and if you are being abused, we not only have we have to get our children counseling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And let them know that this is not normal. When two people are in the house together, yeah, you're going to get it. You, you know, you're going to have your disagreement because it's not two people that don't have disagreements. But when you start throwing stuff and cutting people and all this all type of stuff and beating them and all that, that's, it is not normal. So even in the timing, we have to know the right time for our children to get the help that they need right because it's just not about the abusers and it's not about the victim our children have to get help because we don't want our sons doing that right and that's why i talk to my kids all the time and i actually went on ahead and got them the family counselor and all of that stuff at first it was times when i was like nah we good you know how to black folk do right. we don't need no counseling then right. i started paying attention to certain things and how they started to maneuver and right. i had to be honest with myself right and say okay because i talk to them all the time and yes they listen when they want to and sometimes they listen right. to everything that i'm saying but i tell them all the time i don't want y'all my girls to have to go through this and i don't want my boys to be that so we right gonna, we feel to fix this Right. It's gonna take a minute, but we gonna fix it. Some and then take you a don't want longer. your girls to that to, to go around and act like Auntie Keisha and you know be the abuser. Right, because I used to be a person that would always pass the first lick when I was younger. Right. Once I got into that particular situation, and then I my my esteem was so low, low because right. of everything that had been going on. I stopped fighting. Right. And I was like, okay, let me not. But then it got to a certain point. Okay, you look like you for the bus move. Let me go ahead and hit you first. first. Right. So a lot of the fights came from also yeah. me. Yeah. I'm going to get yeah. you before you get yeah, me because I'm, I'm tired. Knock you at out. This but point. that ain't right. That, yeah. yeah I know right. it wasn't right. But that last yeah. time, that was, yep. When that lamp went upside the head, then. Yeah, it, it knocked it was, the lights yeah. on inside. Yeah. And it was no more after that. Right. So we Praise could. the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm hmm. I'm with so, you on that one. Yeah. But that may not be your way out. Right. So we asking that you guys use wisdom. And we ask that the Lord continue to protect you guys from all her harm and danger. Mm-hmm. And that you heal. Because one wrong hit could really put you out of here. Right. 
So tonight we want to encourage you to release this in a timely manner, a timely fashion. And we pray that God sends someone you can trust that has the capacity to stand with you. Um, and just, just that this, this just be broken, that this domestic violence spirit be broken Mm -hmm. off of your life starting tonight. And guess what? It ends with peace and not a life lost. Yep. Because God didn't put us here for us to die at the hands of man. Now he did declare war in the Bible. And he did give people some permission to go ahead and chop some heads off, but not in domestic violence. This is not how our women is supposed to die. Right. You know, that's not it. That This is not it. It's not normal. Don't allow it continue to be normal. But we pray that you use wisdom, move by the unction of the spirit, mm-hmm. ask the Lord to send you a person or some people that will rescue you in love, and truth, understanding that you will not feel guilty, you will not be ashamed. But, honey, listen, this is not normal. And timing, because that's that's the name of this show tonight. The timing of re- the release, timing is everything. Mm-hmm. So here's the thing: if God tell you to hide for three days, don't say nothing. That means that He has a strategy he, that He's releasing unto you. For your life. Mm -hmm. Because this is life. This is something we can't get back. And then too. Let's expound on the financial abuse. When your significant other. Or the head of the household. Is making all the money. Giving you an allowance. Giving you a certain lifestyle. A home to live in. And all of that stuff. And you're used to so many different things. So that's why you're afraid to leave. Because you don't know how you're going to make it. Right. How you're going to survive. How you're going to pay the bills. Right. Or what clothes you're going to be wearing. That's a part of abuse too. And, right. they, and they know it. If they keep you on that that allowance thing. And keep you looking a certain way. That's, a, that's a, a another form of abuse as well. And it's control. Yeah. When they start isolating you. You already know. Mm-hmm. Yep. Isolation, like I've said before on this show, is clearly a sign of the enemy. Mm-hmm. Who are you talking to? <laughs> Where y'all going? Start putting the tracker app on your phone. Right. You out somewhere and they just pop up. <laughs> Where you come from? Exactly. And see, then I be saying, when I ain't doing that. And I talk too much. <laughs> But, you you know, I'm just saying everybody had their own way of doing a thing. And we want you to be safe. Um, quick trip got a safe. That's a safe zone. You can do. You can run into a quick trip and go into hiding and it's safe. And you don't have to worry about nobody coming. They already are trained and know what to do to get you help and out of the situation. So and in y'all all inbox Minister Rhonda because Minister Rhonda has some good tips. She can give you some good knowledge about the situation. You might not want to talk to Prophet Keisha about it, but talk to Minister Rhonda about it because she know the the, r- the right thing, the right protocol. <laughs> she know the right way. Mm-hmm. And I'm just being honest. I don't know the right way. Well, uh, I mean, it's pretty much the same self-defense class, gun range, Forest Park, do every Sunday, $20 um, to sign up a two-hour class. Oh, but I'm talking about who they can call. Oh. Um, okay. Like domestic hotline, you know. Oh yeah, like definitely. We can. I can post that later on too. Yeah, as well. Minister Ronnie gonna post all the right stuff for the victims to do, men and women. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because you don't want to talk to Minister Keisha about it. Now you I'm still gonna have pray. to be prepared, regardless. Yeah, I'm gonna any pray. situation. We coming up on these holidays as well. Right. So, you know, people robbing, they breaking into stuff. So you need to be prepared and take classes. Yeah, and go get, point go and get your gun survive. license. Let me show you yeah. what they look like. The license go on or the gun? The gun license. <laughs> <laughs> go on and get your gun license right. and everything. So you protect you and your children. So you won't be cut off guard. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something. I love Jesus, and Jesus loved me. But some of his children. 
But I'm going to tell y'all, these people are out here taking lives for mm-hmm. no reason. Yep. And all I'm going to say is, please don't bother me because I ain't going to bother you if you don't bother me. But we want the domestic violence victims, men and women, to stay near and dear to the Lord. Yes. God loves you. There is not one thing you have done to deserve to be beat. Mm-hmm. Um, don't allow the shame and guilt to put you in hiding. Because that is not of God for a man or a woman to beat their significant other. Put their hands on nobody. Right. Even if you think you're in the cult, God, d- let me tell you, that is not how the Lord operates. Mm-hmm. Mental abuse making you think it's one thing, and you know it ain't that. But they trying to convince you uh, that it is. But let me tell you something. When God give you a way of escape, take it. Right. And Sean, what are you what are you talking about? What if they doing something wrong? Who? Hey Sean, by the way, Melanie, Monica. Hey Auntie Jackie. Hey Miss Emma. <laughs> hey y'all. We're trying to encourage these people about domestic violence yes. awareness. Minister Rhonda is going to post some things on at the end of this show. And we want y'all to know that we love y'all. Yes. God loves you. He don't want you to be abused. He want us to love on each other, whether it's learned behavior or you figure it out. Mm-hmm. Imagine how the love and everything. Are you, you know, you two. <laughs> Are you winking? I'm <laughs> just saying. <laughs> you two got... Let me tell you, you can find anything on YouTube. You sure can. I'm sure they can tell you how to love somebody on YouTube. Oh, I know why you winking. <laughs> I'm <laughs> just saying. I know why you winking, girl. They so take you on YouTube. I'm telling you. YouTube got everything. Oh, you how to love. How to, how to love. How to embrace your people. How, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. She I'm so wink, sure. She don't wink her eye about sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I'm oh sure wow. YouTube got it. YouTube I has everything. I'm, I'm telling you. Okay, then. See, 10 simple ways how to love somebody. YouTube it. You can YouTube it. Does, Everybody got Does YouTube. it have a breakdown on the personalities, though? Minister Rhonda, <laughs> nobody well, asks you that complicate. Ask. See, see, it's people like you that make things so complicated. <laughs> because is love is not that complicated. I, I know it's not, but I'm just asking a question. But see, you all made it complicated now, though. Because, see, love ain't that complicated. When you say you love somebody, it's easy for you to embrace them. That's because right. Because your heart should say Love on them. That's why I asked that question, because if it was that simple and easy for people to get, then they wouldn't have a breakdown of anything else as far well, as... Well, it's so about I'm God just asking, because I ain't you never the, looked for that on YouTube. God will give you the desires of your heart. And if he has given you desire to love, surely he'll give you the strategy on how to love. Mm-hmm. So yes, love mm-hmm. yourself, and he'll give you the strategy on how to love yourself, even in these abusive situations. Right, right, because he sure did give me a strategy. You know, you just write on the mirror, I love me. Or if you can't write on the mirror, write on your hand, I love me. I'm going to do this for me today. Yes. You know, we have to start with self-love. Because if I don't love myself, how can I love, I love somebody else. else? And that's in the Bible. It says, love your neighbor as yourself. So if you don't love yourself, you know you're going to be throwing trash over there in your neighbor yard. Mm-hmm. No, good will you ain't supposed to. And that ain't how that's supposed to go. You're supposed to love your neighbor as you love yourself. When you see your neighbor, you see your neighbor, hey, good morning. Mm-hmm. How y'all doing? Put that dog in the house. That's what I be telling them. Put that dog in the house. That dog been outside all the time. That's why I tell my neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> now, see, like y'all would love that dog a little bit in that. Mm. But you support the Bible. That's in the Bible. I'm telling y'all, if we really get deep in this Bible and read it, everything we need, the principles of life, is in the Word of God, which right. is the Bible. 
Everything that's going on in the world. It now, is. Stuff it's in the Bible. It'll tell you how to love yourself. Let me tell y'all, men that's, that's in love, read the Psalms of Solomon. Because he, ta- he tells you how to love, how to love, how to kiss. He tell you all of that, all of that is in the Bible. I'm read it. I ain't telling you no story. I'm for real. Mm-hmm. And y'all women, y'all didn't learn how to love your husband and listen. Mm-hmm. Listen and everything. <laughs> and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, and if you don't understand the King James Version, they got the Good News Version, and it'll read it to you. Mm-hmm. So like Minister Rhonda said, love on yourself. If you're in these situations and being abused and everything, start loving on yourself. And we're going to tell you tonight, we love you. I love you so much, seriously. And God do, too. He don't want us to be beat up and looking ugly and stuff. Right. And don't be beating up the man either, because you know y'all, it's some y'all, it's some women out here that's serious. They be laying them hands, baby. Right, like it ain't nothing. Like it ain't nothing. I'm telling you, I'm telling you guys. I know, I know where I come from. But you so know, it's time to make a change. It do something is. Different. We got to save is. our children and our we don't own want it to lives. Be a continuous thing throughout the our community and other communities. We got to make a change and, and save our children. Right. They so, are mommy, our mommy, make a decision. Daddy, make a decision. Daddy, make a decision. You don't want to get beat up no more. Around right here, putting on the police uniform, going out here, serving and protecting. Again, get home, you hide. Mm hmm. There's something You like know, the roles, I'm telling you, and y'all. I'm going to go on and say it. Y'all first ladies, first men, first whatever, first inside the four walls of these churches. Because they are being abused too. It's a lot of that going on. Yep. It ain't right. It's not right. For the pastor to be beating on his wife. And for the first lady to be beating on the pastor. Because it goes both ways. Right. And we got some, you, you know, you got some quiet first lady, but you got some first lady to get home. And baby, it go down. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Lord help her. I'm just saying. Because I don't want nobody to think that it's all about women. I am not one of these people that everything is, I, let me tell you, I take up for the men and the ones the men you know what and i take up for the ones that's wrong too because sometimes they really don't mean no harm sometimes you you speaking for the for the you know human race period yeah overall. but sometimes people just really don't mean no harm they just really don't understand but that don't mean that you got to stand up there and get beat even though if they don't mean no harm it's not right Right is right and wrong is wrong. And the right thing to do is to keep your hands to yourself. Man, woman, little girls, and little boys. Because these little boys be around here trying to jump on a little girl because of what they see at home. Right. Being little bullies. Ooh. And then you have a mother like me. Thank you, Jesus. I don't have no small ones during this season of bullying. Because a mother like me, you bullying my child. I'm going to bully you and your parents. Then we're going to have a whole lot. We're just going to have a mm-hmm. straight out war. Or either you're going to get banned from the school like I did. And you don't want that because your kids still got to go to school. They still got to go cool. Yep. So tonight we want to encourage you all, domestic violence, y'all, it's real. Just because it's not happening to you don't mean it's not happening. And if you know you're not good, a good support system, direct your friend to somebody who's going to have their back. Mm-hmm. And please, y'all, stop standing around watching these folk get beat on the right. street and just pull out your phone and record. Now, I get it. Some people Record it, but dial 911 or, or go something. on. But you, now, you know this is a um, <laughs> stand your ground state. So if you see a woman getting beat, you're going to pistol whip him right quick. Or if you see a man getting beat, you can go ahead and break it up, whatever. 
whatever floats your boat. But right. y'all, yeah, somebody, we got to start stepping in and not and just, helping the people. Yeah, that is so irritating. We y'all, we gotta help our people. Everything. We people love y'all. I love y'all. I don't. I don't. You know. I. I don't. I don't like it. I don't like it. Minister Rhonda will tell you I don't like it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And hold these kids accountable too. They got to be held accountable when, when they doing wrong. Too many parents out here babysitting their kids, their teenagers, know that's right. not being honest. Yeah, trying to be their friend. Yeah, we're going to have a conversation, but when it's time to get down to it, because a lot of these kids, we already live, uh, dealing with a generation that has, they think that we owe them everything. They have the spirit of entitlement. Yes. And they are fearless. Yes. It's so if you know your son that. is beating on his girlfriend. Right. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't condone that. They, they need accountability. Because that's right. They need to be held responsible. And then if you know your your uh girl child is around here jumping on these boys, don't condone that because mm-hmm. it's gonna be that one boy that ain't gonna have it. And then we then you know then we'll be mad. Right. So let's just it's not cute. It's not cute. It's not cute. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. Yeah, I'm seeing more and more of those little ones. They doing that on, mm-hmm. on the they internet. Do? I just having they, you know, making their little shows and cussing and doing all oh, that stuff. Parent no. in the background laughing. Yeah. Uh uh-uh. uh. That's say, not funny. Mm-hmm. It's not funny. We have to raise it. The Bible tells us to train up a child in the way that it should go, not teach, but train. Mm-hmm. It's a difference between teaching and training. Teaching is giving it to them, telling them what to do. Training them is showing them what to do. Right. Meaning hands-on work. Train up a child in the way that it should go. And even when it depart from you, guess what it's going to do? Going to come on back here. Yep, that's right. You could call it forth. You call that spirit back into alignment and say, hey, I didn't train you that way. But if you don't give them any training, you just got a hyena out here, Mm -hmm. a weasel, just bucking the system. And then you got these collect calls coming on your phone every time you turn around. Right. So it begins somewhere, and it says, what did it start? It spreads abroad, what they call it, what they used to say back in the day? Mm -hmm. Oh, Maybe I'm old. (laughs) We the same age. I just don't remember what you well, said. What you was it talking talks about. about how it starts in the home and then it spreads abroad. If you don't teach them in the home on how to act, then when they get out, mm-hmm. they're going to be showing out. Mm-hmm. But even as adults now, we got trained and spanked and knocked oh, yes. out and hit upside the head. Oh, yeah. But now, these children these days, not mine, but. <laughs> Honey, you can't whoop these kids. Mm-hmm. And then half of them, they, they they have seen their parents in these domestic violence situations. And it just really turns the child a spirit right. in the wrong direction. Right. So domestic violence victims, we love you guys. Make sure you release this in a timely manner. And I pray that the Holy Spirit leads you and guides you and gives you strategy and strength more than anything Mm -hmm. and divine protection for you and your children, man and woman. Because one thing we forget, we leave our men out. And my ministry will not discount men. We're going to count the men in. I want the men in on the ministries because we need that testosterone, that structure of mm-hmm. men. We got to start allowing these men to know that they're welcome into our environment of worship. So we praying for y'all men. If you being abused, if you in a domestic situation, and you know, don't act, you know, don't let your pride keep you there. Right. God loves you as well. Minister Rhonda, leave, leave us with a prayer and a word of encouragement, whichever one the Lord leads you. Mm. 
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just thank you for this day, Father God. We thank you for just your spirit, Lord God. We thank you for the message on this evening, Father God. Lord God, we just ask that you cover and protect each and every person that is dealing with domestic violence, whether whichever um, abuse it is that they're experiencing, Father God. We just ask that you send your angels down and encamp upon them and just cover them and protect them, Father yes, God. Lord. We ask that you give them a strategy to get out of the situation, Lord yes, God. Lord. We're asking that your will is done in their life, Father God, yes, that you change change the hearts of the abuser lord god yes, you change the Jesus. hearts of the abusee to know that they deserve better father god yes and lord. that the person that is causing this harm upon amongst other people father god we just ask that you just change them you renew their heart mind and their soul yes we lord. command the devil to get off of this situation lord god yes, and to lord. get off of that person father god yes, and Jesus. we just ask that their steps are ordered by you lord and only you father god you give them the direction that they need father god and let this message touch somebody on tonight even if it's just one person father god to to leave and get out of a situation to save their life lord god it's time for the generational curse to be broken In the amongst your people, Jesus. Father God. Lord God, we know that you're coming very soon, Father God. And we know that we have to get it right. But we also know we have to stand together on one accord to make this thing happen, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Let us continue to abide in your word and your spirit, Father God. Let this message get out, Lord God, and just touch someone else, Father God. And we pray these things in your precious son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We'll be back on next Monday. Hopefully, we will have us a breast cancer awareness guest. Yes. That'll come and sit here with us and t tell their story. Yes. If not, we're going to keep it pushing. Um, Wear your pink. Pink is for your breast cancer. We're going to wear our purple for our domestic violence. We're going to celebrate it to the fullest. We kicked it off last Saturday in a round circle of women, you know, just expressing how God has brought them out. Right. Yes. Because God will bring you out. Sure will. God, here's your <laughs> testimony. God will bring you out. Yes. This is a living testimony. God will bring you out. So if he did it for Minister Rhonda, surely. He can do it for you. He will do it for you. Amen. So good night. We love you guys. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Please share. Share this broadcast. Like and share. Like and share. Yes. Share and like. Like and share. And we'll see you guys back on Monday. And I'll be posting it, um, reposting conversation with Keisha because mine's kept cutting off. So if you want to see the full show, you can go to Misfits Media Group. You can go to Conversation with Keisha and Rhonda B. Or Lakeisha Cooley page until I get this thing figured out with my phone, okay? Bye Kay. bye. <laughs> <laughs>